Hello and welcome to Close Up. In this program, we're touching base with some friends who oftentimes would stop by and speak with us. And we're talking here about the Peace Corps unit in Guyana. And so they have reached a very important mark in their service as it relates to their volunteers. Some are leaving. And we've got in with us uh, the country director who is here, always a smiling face. I think she's adopted the Guyanese nationality, if you want to say that. she. Pretty much, yeah. and she's been here long enough. And we've got two friends that are leaving. Um, well, they'll be telling us about their stories, actually. And so we're happy to have them. So let's welcome Cory Coham, and she is the country director. And you will be familiar with this face. Welcome aboard, Cory. Thank you. Thanks uh, for having us again. Yeah. We've got Sam, Samantha, and Rebecca, both ladies here who have served and um, a little teary eye in getting ready to leave, probably coming back, we don't know. But uh, we'll hear more from them. But let's start with Curry. And um, Curry, this it's always important when we've got volunteers coming in to serve. Mm -hmm. um, it's a new experience. They adopt new families. They become immersed in societies and mm -hmm. cultures and stuff like that. And eventually, some of them, it's kind of difficult for them to leave. Mm -hmm. It's true. Yeah. I mean, I, I can pull from my own service, and then I just recently had um, tw 23 volunteers have well, will be leaving or will be closing their service mm -hmm. from their two years, and I had great conversations with them about the successes and challenges that they had as serving in, in Guyana. But just having the sense that they have accomplished something so, you know, unsurmountable when you first arrive, two years is a long time, or you mm. think it's a long time. Yes. And then when you reach that milestone, how quickly it's gone by. And it's ever-changing. I could see the transformation in almost everybody that I spoke with. And it transformed myself as well. I think when we first spoke, I talked about how it's a lifelong um, experience that you've had for those, for me, for it was four years, and that it just changed me forever. It made me want to be in international development, made me want to work with people um, from some culture outside of my own, and it really enhanced my ability to be a better world actor. Mm -hmm. um, all, and no matter where I go, it serves me well. So mm -hmm. um, I'm really happy to have these two here to talk about their closing of service, and thank you so much for having us here to talk about this segment or, or space of time when volunteers come in the middle of their service and now at the end of their service. Yeah, but well, before we go into the, the, the story of the ladies, sitting as country director for you, it's an experience to see them come and go. Yeah. Uh, you're here. And I, I don't think I want to see you leave, but you know, your time will come and you will say <laughs> bye bye to Mark and, and the rest of the, the Guyana team. Mm -hmm. But for you, it's an experience, especially as you learn of the different cultures. This is one. We've got uh, six people. And in one of, the, one of the groups we've got, we've got uh, nine nations. This is the Amerindian mm -hmm. um, indigenous brothers and mm -hmm. sisters. And sometimes going into indigenous communities, learning of the different dialects and the way of life, the way they do things, all uniquely different, mm -hmm. I'm sure is a warming experience for you. Oh, definitely. I mean, I think I have the best job. Um, in the for, We are a U.S. Yeah. government agency. Yeah. I think that as an agency, I have a fantastic opportunity to see all the volunteers in where they work and live and work and the people for which embrace them. Yeah. And some of that is, um, quite a number of communities are, are indigenous communities. And that has been very warming for me because it's something that I had not experienced as intently. And um, so I very much appreciated those interactions as well as with any other community that I've gone into. But it's just a pleasure because they are very welcoming and warm to having us there and um, interested in the work that we have to partner with to enhance their community goals and their developmental goals. So mm -hmm. that's very, um, it's a positive experience for me. Um, it's, it's always life changing for me every day. I was telling them just, at, we had a, a farewell party the other day and um, I was sharing how I wake up every day and I want to go to work. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if a lot of people can say that and that's because of the, the work that we do in support of the Guyanese people, but also the work that I see in the development of the individuals that come here. Mm -hmm. So I'm very excited about the fact that this is what I ha this is what I wake up ev to every day. The thing about it is, is, is your personality, and so for you, and this is like a vacation. So you're having a paid vacation for the rest yes, of your life. Yes, child. Yes. You having a paid vacation <laughs> yes. for the rest of your life. Yes. I, yes. I and you. I love it. Yes. I get you. Yes. I get you. All right. So who's going to go first, Sam or Rebecca? Which one of you girls will go first? I think you should go first. Ah. Yeah. Ah. I guess I'll go first. <laughs> <laughs> My dear. So tell us about you. Tell us who um, you are. Well, I'm Rebecca mm. Tatarski. Um, I am finishing up my third year here in Guyana. I spent my first two years in New Amsterdam 
and then this last year in Georgetown working in the office. Education volunteer, so I worked in a primary school for two years, um, working with the teachers and the students to just um, try and, you know, provide a sounding board for them to, you know, to help improve their techniques, um, worked with children who, um, um, to increase their basic reading skills and uh, learning comp reading comprehension and that none of that is possible without the teacher's help mm -hmm. and so I really enjoyed that time um, working with those teachers mm -hmm. and those students and then this last year I've been in Georgetown working with staff and volunteers kind of in between both and and really learning what Peace Corps as an agency is more like, and then also um, the looking outside into the volunteer experience. Where does Rebecca come from? Where does Rebecca come from? I come from Nashville, Tennessee. Oh, Nashville, Tennessee. <laughs> and you give us a little of your background, oh, family, yeah. who you've left, how tough it was for you to get involved in the service and coming to really get involved in a new culture, different environment, uh, people that you've never seen. Tell us a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I came um, from Nashville. Tennessee. I was a teacher back mm. home. Um, I so you're, you're in comfortable zone. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I was. At, I taught for ten years in a what we call middle school in Nashville Public Schools, and um, I, I was doing that for a while, and I just sensed a change, and so I, I, you know, moved on to something else for a little while. And then it was actually my mother who suggested Peace, Peace Corps. And so I hadn't really thought about it. So I looked into it and then here I was. Um, leaving was hard. Your whole life is there. It's mm -hmm. what you know. It's what, you know, anybody can attest to that. But okay. um, the support that I received from my family and friends has been amazing and that makes it better it's not easy all the time uh -huh. you miss out on things you you miss people you miss milestones in their lives but you're also enriching yours okay. as well so okay. it's it kind of balances out in a way and before I go to Sam how has your experience here helped you for your next choice in life as you go back home Wow, good question. Um, I have grown as a person so much and I think so many people have here yeah. that that come in um, I, you know, I've learned a lot about myself uh, through help with the Guidance people and just learning that, you know, the learning about the different cultures and seeing how different or similar mm -hmm. that, you know, my life was to this life here and just seeing the, um, just how you can, you know, put it together and, and make things work. And so... I think for going forward, um, it has changed my perception of what I would like to do when I get back. Um, so I, I still am an educator at heart, but okay. I think I want to try to use that in, a, in into another direction other than okay. like going well, back in a classroom. Uh, nice. Uh, Sam Stern, and uh, you're <laughs> smiling. Pretty much you're having some fun. So uh, first of all, tell us where you're from, mm -hmm. uh, where Sam is from, and uh, how tough it was for you to leave and, and come here? So I'm from Peterborough, New Hampshire. It's a very small community, maybe five hours above New York City. Okay. Um, I used to work as a social worker, so I was like a welfare officer with children and families. Um, and I, I think that to do that job well, you can't just understand your own family. You have to understand families of all different types. Mm -hmm. And I really felt that Peace Corps would help me do that and help me exp um, better understand people that are, that are not similar to myself. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I tell people this all the time, leaving for Peace Corps was the scariest thing I've ever done in my life. And I remember the night before I left and got on the plane to come to Guyana, I looked at my family and I said, I've never been so scared before. <laughs> because leaving, leaving the people yeah. you love and the people who have supported you, yes. um, it, 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 almost seems, it almost seems wild in the moment. Okay. You don't understand why you're doing it, and it's, it's just this really big step that you've never had to take before. Mm -hmm. um, and so now I've served for two years in Region 1. Um, I'm a health volunteer, and I work to try to connect the community and adolescents with health services. So I work, yes, and I love it. Um, I work partially with the schools and partially with health services okay. um, to make the hospital a more comfortable place for teens and their families to go. Mm -hmm. um, 
and it's been it's been really rewarding and it was it was a worthwhile step to come to Guyana because I'm gonna stay one more year I'll be staying and taking over Rebecca's position when she leaves here in Georgetown um, working with the office and staff as all right, well all right. yeah. and uh, before I go to Curry I want to find out from you ladies if you can uh, you're just about leaving uh, you've got one more year have you established relationships that are so deep and dire and close to you that it seems a little difficult for you to break at the same since you're going back and you've got one more year to share with whomever it is that you would have <laughs> made that good relationship with. So I start with you. Absolutely. Um, we we stay with host families when we come here. Yeah. So my host family from the Essequibo Coast has, was amazing. They still they're they are amazing. So I'm gonna I'm really gonna miss them. And same with the friends and family that I've I've gotten to know in Burbese that have be I mean they everybody they've become my family. Mm -hmm. And so um, and they've helped me. They help you. They take you around, introduce you to people. I mean they're integral to our service and they you know it, it's it's very hard mm -hmm. to say goodbye I don't want to <laughs> I know that and Sam your turn absolutely I completely agree with Becca I think that leaving the people that have helped you grow and change over the past two years is will be I think the second hardest thing yes. <laughs> I've had to do in my mm -hmm. life um, and I know I'm only moving in a uh, one plane ride away from this community but I feel I will carry what they've what they've given me for the rest of my life. Okay, let's yeah. go to the country director because you've had so many of these experiences back and forth, hearts broken, some tears as well. Mm -hmm. As you leave, uh, sometimes the hugs seem so long, it's difficult to release or loose and allow the person to go because you gotta go, you gotta go on a plane, mm -hmm. you gotta go leave them. Mm -hmm. And you say probably a finally goodbye, but we have had volunteers that have said, you know what, um, I'm gonna spend a little longer as she's decided one year. In fact, both of them have stayed an extra year. Mm -hmm. But some have made families here as well. Uh, yes. Let's talk about that. Yes. Well, I think in one of the, did we have Adana here? I think I'm looking at my colleague. <laughs> we had a colleague that, or a former volunteer, Adana, who came to mm -hmm. speak here, and she got married to uh, someone mm -hmm. that she had met here in, wow. in Guyana, mm -hmm. and she's since re-immigrated herself to the United States. But they were here for many years. Um, so there are, I mean, I, people are people, and you make connections and. Um, and strong connections no matter where you go. And I find that to be um, um, humbling as well mm -hmm. because, as you know, we have other goals within Peace Corps, not just our developmental yeah. goals and yeah. support, but also giving of ourselves, so sharing a bit of who we are as Americans so that you understand who we are better, but also learning of you, learning of all the yeah. Guyanese people and the culture um, and bringing that into our hearts as well. And I think you could hear that when they yes, talked about yes. that. So with, for, for all of us, we've accomplished those three goals. And I think that um, it, it is very heartening for me when I do see the relationships that people create here and form here and foster. And the party that I had that I invited you to, by the way, um, <laughs> you would have seen it for yourself. Um, we had people could invite people yep. and they invited their loved ones. They invited their host families. Yep. They just invited people that were, they were close to, mm -hmm. and you could see those relationships and how hard it was for people to separate, you know, yeah. during the party and after the party as well. And then you see that during their, their service also. So when I served, you didn't have to live, we were talking about this on the way, you didn't have to live with a host family. But I think that our, us doing that here really is, uh, does help to create a strong bond. It's not always successful, but I do think okay. that it is a good um, practice that we have. And it gets better every time we, we, we work on it and, and support it. But it really does help with integration, but also just creating those connections that help us to meet the other goals that we have. So I wish I had had a host family when I was a volunteer many, many years ago. But I'm so helpful. I'm so ha happy that they had that experience and have been e even stronger for it, you know. Mm -hmm. Curry, well, your role is the role of that of more or less of, as a mother in charge of quite a number of volunteers who are is that true? Uh, people sometimes <laughs> I know I know and so um, and because you've been here so long um, you you tend to understand more than they would because they're not coming in um, the guy needs culture more or less and you'll be able to say to them well um, you say this you don't say that or you do this you don't do that if you're given something you eat it especially with certain culture certain um, groups of people in our country um, uh, if you go to certain parts of the country, for example, in Burbese, mm -hmm. which Rebecca would have had that experience, mm -hmm. if you offer the meal, you don't refuse. Uh, they don't take it kindly when you do that. Mm -hmm. Even if you go to take a little part of it, you know, they, act, they, they, they feel as if you accepted them if you've done that kind of thing. Yeah, and so there are certain um, things that 
apply to different groups in the country. You, you, you understand that pretty well, the culture. Now, it, it puts you in the driver's seat, pretty much. And mm -hmm. sometimes, I'm sure, you're looking, sitting back, looking at some of the volunteers where they're host families and probably wearing that smile and saying, this is going to be a hard one to break when they have to separate? Mm -hmm. No, often, all the time, all the time. I mean, because honestly, it really, it takes a village. Yeah. And that's one of the things when I walked in here, I wanted to create a community. And that community includes people like yourself. You're mm -hmm. a member of our community mm -hmm. because you help to support us, the volunteers, the um, host families, the counterparts that they work with. I mean, the, the Shushals in the, in the indigenous mm. communities, they really form a part of who we are as Peace Corps. We couldn't be successful in any way without that. Down to how to wash your clothes without a washing machine. Yeah. Down to clapping roti. <laughs> down to whatever. You guys have had that too. You've clapped with roti, have you? Uh, let me see the hands of anybody. <laughs> oh, all, I, okay. I've tried. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do with Tupperware. Yeah. <laughs> but it's really, I mean, yeah. it, to me, I always say, respect the lives that you interact with. Oh, yeah. It's different than yours, mm -hmm. but it's what somebody is experiencing where they were born, bred, and die. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that to me is powerful. Yeah. And, and wealth doesn't mean happiness. Ah. And so really ensuring that people recognize that and respect that the communities profound. that they that they serve in. And yeah. and these two women I think exemplify that. That is so profound. And I'm gonna I'm gonna tease the girls' minds. I'm gonna have Rebecca uh -oh. go back in time. You've been <laughs> here for three years. And so I'm going to ask you, Rebecca, give us one particular experience that is lasting in your mind um, that you're going to take with you and you may not forget that your experience while being here as a volunteer in Burbies, not Georgetown, in Burbies. In Burbies. Yeah. There's, there's so many. Yeah. Give me one. Really have to give us choose one. one. Well, just the acceptance of, of the people there, like being invited into their homes and being accepted as another member of the family, mm. um, the students... Um, like unequivocal love and happiness that every time you walk around the corner, Miss Becca, Miss Becca, you know, just um, that excitement from them, um, and just the um, just the overwhelming welcomeness mm -hmm. that um, I received the the two years that I was there. And while speaking, you spoke of similarities. Are there any similarities that you you observed while here? I mean, Burbies uh, to your home country. As, yes, as there are similar similarities. There's um, with your um, interactions with people. You mm -hmm. just um, there are si time, times where somebody will say, I can't think of an example at the moment, but say something. And you're like, yes, that happens. I understand that. You know, we mm -hmm. you can connect on that way to say, you know, you know, we have these differences, but yet this one issue is the same here and here. This one. Um, um, thing that you have experienced, I've experienced that too, just in a different place. Mm -hmm. So it, that also helps to form connections in here. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's very eye-opening because if you haven't left the country, if you haven't, and like for anybody, you just don't, you don't see that. So you think like, oh, th nobody <laughs> else experiences yeah. what I have experienced. Yeah. But then you get here and it, it's not true. All right. Like, Let's go across to Rebecca. Give us that one experience that you will take with you. In fact, you've got one more year, but um, mm -hmm. one that's defining in your mind is edged in your memory. Well, I have kind of a silly one here. I, when I first got to my site, my host mother had to teach me how to scrub my boots because where I live, there's a lot of red sand. Okay. Um, and I will never forget it. And it was such a small act. She would help me and show me how to soak them down in the soap powder and how to really scrub them and make sure they were clean every day before I go to work. And it's such a small act, but it was something that made a really big difference for how I understood her care for me. Um, and her willingness to help me with even the smallest things to fit in and to be a part of the community and not be the one person walking around with mud on my shoes, mm -hmm. right? And it was just this small act that, that really helped me see how much she cared for me and how much she was willing to, to help me be a part of the community okay. as well. Right. Yeah. Mm. And you again would have had a couple of those experiences and mm -hmm. even more. And I think the last time we spoke, you did speak of some of the experiences that you would have had. Mm -hmm. Uh, at Peace Corps, being the country director, there are quite a number of things that you look for. In fact, at the end of the tenure of a volunteer, that you would have said, okay, we, we accomplished this, we established this, we were able to achieve this, we did not achieve this. And I am I'm, I'm pretty certain that you are comfortable with the many hands that have been changed, volunteers coming through you for the period of time, how much your communities would have benefited 
mm -hmm. from their tenure or their service. Let's talk about that. Sure. I mean, that is a good question and, and something that we are working hard on to measure mm -hmm. because we do have volunteers that in some communities there have been a series of volunteers over time. And as a country director, I would love to know, and the government would love to know, how we're measuring our advancement of that community. So when we work on our primary project, for example, Rebecca was working on literacy. Where was that community, community or school on literacy she when she it. arrived? And now, how has she helped the school mm -hmm. to move the needle or the envelope forward? And um, so we do strive for that. And we have new frameworks that we just signed with the government uh, early in the year, or late last year. Uh, for environment, for I'm sorry, for health and education okay. and environment, we're making a few changes on as well. All of the volunteers now, from now on, will be working in schools and as teachers, either in primary or secondary schools. So it'll be easier for us to measure what was, how did the, how were the students before they arrived? How were they in their first year? How were they in their second year? So I'm very excited to see that transformation, and all of that work is in in partnership. So we do strive to work in partnership or from behind and not from the front mm -hmm. um, because we do want things to be sustainable in the long run. So though the volunteers do really solid, good work for two years, they can both attest to the fact that they tried to leave something behind, some technology, t technical skills behind, even some, in some cases, technology behind. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but in providing the necessary training to ensure the community can move forward with it on their own because mm -hmm. we do our best work when there's sustainability attached to anything that we do. So in regards to our teaching efforts, it is all co-teaching. Our, our goal is not to replace a teacher. We don't want our volunteers to be working full time in schools because the teachers should naturally be there. And that's the commitment the government has made to that school. But our commitment to the government is that we will be providing um, co-support mm -hmm. to teachers in regards to literacy or health and family life education or life sciences as it relates to environment. So, and, and we are doing our more purposeful in working with the government and measuring our ability to help them attain their developmental goals and the indicators that they've set for themselves as well. Mm -hmm. And you know, Corey, something has just dawned on me and while I'm speaking to you, and I think we would have had like about four or five conversations, Sasha. Sasha was sitting <laughs> on the outside. You don't see Sasha, but she's an integral part of the conversation. <laughs> she's always at me. And of course, we've got a good relationship, part of Peace Corps as well is I'm seeing more or less um, more females I I in the volunteer program. And mm -hmm. so uh, I, 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 the brothers say, saying, um, I really don't want to be here. Um, I, I could do something else. Or the women are saying, I want to do it. You I know, want to help. It's very interesting because we were looking back at the inception of Peace Corps mm. in the early 1960s, and it was predominantly men, predominantly white oh, men, with so a spattering true. of 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 women mm -hmm. and minorities. And it's turned completely wow. to being predominantly women and very few men. I even call men unicorns. And there's not <laughs> many places in the professional world where you can't yeah, find, yeah. find a guy. But mm -hmm. for Peace Corps, for some reason, it seems to attract women. Um, development seems to c attract women. Uh, so there are less, definitely less women, less men than women. So mm. I would say we bring in probably 75% females okay. and 30% males to the program All right. consistently. Yeah. All right. So we're just about getting ready to wrap up. And as we get ready to say goodbye to Rebecca, just tell us, how has your service or being a volunteer, how has it changed your life as you get ready to fly back home? Oh. <laughs> it's changed immensely. My outlook on, on things, my... Um, just the experience alone um, has made me think in a different mm -hmm. way, made me realize that um, as Americans, you tend to have a sense of entitlement. Okay. Um, and coming here, that's wiped away. And like uh, in working with the students and teachers here, there is no sense of entitlement from them, and it's refreshing, and it, 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 it changes your thought process and changes, it, it, I mean, it changes your life. I'm not going back the same Rebecca as I came, but I feel like I'm going back a better person and mm -hmm. a better version of myself. So there's naturally a readjusting there. Yes. You're readjusting. Yes, there's going to be a readjusting. Um, I'm not exactly sure what it's going it's to feel be. like. Um, yeah. I've talked to people that have already done it, and I know Curry has done it as well. Um, 
but I know, I mean, the first time I ever went home on, on a visit, I froze in the supermarket and I had to like hide in a, like away from the frozen foods. I was so cold because I had gotten used, not used to the heat, but you come, you become accustomed. Yeah, you and become so, yeah. yeah mm -hmm. So there are things like that that I know I'll have to get used to. But um, as for how difficult, I think the one thing I'm, I'm anticipating is going there and for the first time not having a plane ticket back mm -hmm. and so knowing like i get there and it's i'm there okay so you may have to pinch yourself up you would have woken the first morning and realize i i'm in a different territory yes all yeah. right let's go across the sam who's got one year but your outlook on life has changed as a result of your experience as a volunteer absolutely has it? absolutely i think that the people of guyana have taught me lessons i i couldn't learn in a lifetime at home um, and I think it's really pushed me to create relationships with people who are different than myself. Mm -hmm. um, I was very comfortable at home, surrounded by people who are similar to me, did similar work as myself. Um, and now I see the value in being around people who can challenge me and who can teach me new things and show me a new perspective. So I, ho mm -hmm. I hope to carry that for the rest of my life and mm -hmm. never end up in a situation where I'm just comfortable again, where I'm always learning and growing. Uh, so you are less, you are less adjusting already, already started making that adjustment in your life yeah. mentally. Yes. As it relates to how Absolutely. you perceive things. Yeah. All right. Absolutely. Every day. Right. Last word is on curry. Curry. Um, I think yeah, we, we've got we got to keep. Um, calling on you because you are one of the people that, that pretty much is responsible for holding the hands of these volunteers. Mm -hmm. And so you need to take a bow on that, but as well as understand and appreciate that um, there are quite a number of changes that are taking place in the lives of your volunteers, even as they would have come and given to these communities. Mm -hmm. They would have left their imprint or their mark in the communities and given them a better education, health, or whichever uh, facet of life that they're working in. That little bit of pep or a little bit of input us mm -hmm. but they too are taking stuff with them that they will take for the rest of their lives with them oh definitely i mean it's you're changed forever honestly mm -hmm. and you really it, it's a cliche but you really take more than you you give you feel that way yeah. i don't think the community feels that way i mean some some volunteers feel like they they didn't make a difference yeah. but once you, if you ever go back to a community people just have never never forget you no matter what little thing you did. I tell volunteers all the time, if, even if you spend six weeks a year, that's six more weeks than so many millions of people have done. Mm -hmm. And you've given yourself your time to someone selfishly yeah. to support them for basically, you know, little funds, you know, as a volunteer. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's life-changing. It's so powerful, and, which is why I came back to Peace Corps, because it changed my life so much that I wanted to be infectious. Yeah. And I hope I was that a little bit for you all. Um, to share why it was so powerful for, for me as well. And just hearing their stories just makes me tear up a little bit. I'm not a crier, but I was like, oh, my God, my babies, <laughs> you know, have grown, and I'm just very yeah. proud of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? I want to thank you, ladies, for coming in, and um, wish you all the best, Rebecca. Thank you. On your soul journey, your new step in life, because it's you, your outset, your outlook is different. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to be looking at things from a different Peer of lens, I, I rather suspect. Absolutely. Uh, Sam is still with us, Samantha. Yes, I am. And so she has got one more year. Curry seems to be here for a long time. We want to keep her <laughs> uh, along with, with Sasha. Sasha's not going anywhere in a hurry. No. So <laughs> we're keeping these ladies, but thank you so much for your service. Thank and I think um, it would be fitting to say thank you on behalf of the people of this nation and the children of the nation, because I know uh, your hearts are very, very close to the children uh, since you work um, more or less with them. And uh, we hope that you continue serving wherever you go, even if you're out of the service, where you continue uh, practicing what you would have learned here while in Guyana. Sincere thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Curry, and it was my pleasure having you. As always, a pleasure to be here. Thank you so yeah. much for your support. Sure. Our friends from Peace Corps touching down, telling us about um, actually their closed season. They are just about getting ready to leave. It's just these two, not this one. That's right. She's staying. <laughs> and we're going to have more. But as they come, we're going to be introducing them to you. And, you know, it's really great listening. If you really do spend time with the people of the communities that they would have worked in and you hear the stories, you don't understand how impacting it is. Uh, we want to say thank you. And we want to thank you, too, for staying with us. Until our next program of Close Up, take care. Thank you. Goodbye.